Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Yule, the Master Superintendent at Uplands Golf Club. This week, we're going to talk about our tree management strategies, and no better backdrop than this 300-year-old Gary Oak that's more than 16 feet in circumference. Uplands actually was a farm back in the middle 1800s, owned by the Hudson's Bay Company. And Gary Oak is actually named after Nicholas Gary, the first governor of the Hudson's Bay Company from 1822 to 1835. We're going to be talking about some of the various tree management strategies throughout the property. So come on and we'll go take a look. As you can see, the property's changed since the 1800s. In the 1940s, we had a member that donated hundreds of Douglas fir seedlings and also ponderosa pines. This provided some screening and separation on the various holes on the golf course. Over time, the Douglas fir and ponderosa started to grow, but ponderosas weren't naturally occurring. As you can see the ponderosa behind me, there's a deep split in the lower part of the ponderosa pine, and those become a challenge to maintain, and they're prone to splitting and breaking. In the 1980s, we had BC Forestry Service come out and assess the trees, and they recommended that we remove all of our ponderosa pines because they weren't indigenous to this area. So in the mid 80s, we actually removed 35 to 40 ponderosa pines out of number one fairway alone. And here's an example of exotic species that really don't belong onto a golf course. As you walk down our 10th hole here, you see a beautiful redwood in behind, but it's covered by two large poplar trees that are very invasive to the property, but also will cause overcrowding. In the 1980s, when we started to lose a tree, we had a lose one tree plant two, and over the years we started to get a lot of overcrowding within. Here's a good example of the ponderosa pine. We have over 130 ponderosa pines on property, and as you can see, they've matured, and with the rainfall that we receive here on Vancouver Island, approximately 40 inches a year, it's too moist. Along with regular irrigation, these trees don't survive very well. And you can see the growth habits and the overgrowth on them that they cause splitting and branches to fail and really just a, a hazardous trees as they get older. So in the coming years, we'll, we'll be looking to remove many of the ponderosa pines that are starting to fail on us. 38 years ago, when I first started here, the thought process was let's make the golf course more challenging. So we started to add more bunkers, but we also started to tighten up some of the landing areas and some of the green surrounds. So the two Douglas fir trees that you see behind me planted them, not much thought, what do they look like 38 years later? And they're causing some playing challenges as far as debris coming off and also some growing challenges with restricting air movement and sunlight. For example, this green last week when we had a windstorm, we had four people backpack blowing this green just to get it clean before we could even mow it. So now we find ourselves in a windstorm. We could be spending in the neighborhood of 20 hours actually cleaning our greens before we can even mow them. Back in the early 1980s, it only used to take one person. From the other side of our 10th green, you can actually see the size of this Douglas fir here. This tree really shouldn't be planted this close to this green. Can you imagine the size of this tree in the next hundred years? We actually might not be able to play this existing location of the green. So we should remove these trees and then look to plant other indigenous species somewhere in the golf course that aren't going to impact play and also impact play or growing conditions on the golf course. This is an example of our Gary Oak Meadows. We started to naturalize our property when we became a certified Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary. So to protect our Gary Oak species, we created these areas that wildlife can cohabitate with the golfers and also we could enhance our bird populations. We've added over 55 bird boxes on property and we now have over 99 species in our bird inventory list. With more than 2,500 trees on property, where do you start when it comes to maintaining and managing a tree? In 2009, we hired Bartlett Tree Service, and they brought on two master arborists on property for over two weeks, and they assessed each individual tree on property. As you can see, the trees have a blue tag on it, and that tag is a georeference number. We are able to produce a map with ArborView tree management software, and each tree tag has 17 different attributes from tree species, from the diameter, to the location of the tree on the property and when we should be doing the pruning work. It allows us to update and manage our trees and to make sure we have current 
health of all of our trees with the inventory. We're able to identify our species location so we can start planting indigenous species on parts of the property that don't currently have an indis indigenous species population. Managing fine cut turf at Uplands can be a challenge. Here we're on our 17th green and really one of the picturesque holes at Uplands, surrounded by Gary Oaks, but we are probably one of the few golf courses that has a Gary Oak tree within six feet of the edge of the green. And this limits our sun to the, to the green. This particular green here might not receive direct sun until three o'clock in the afternoon. So we use a software called Sunseeker that will show us a sun angle and we've been able to selectively prune individual branches out so we can get filtered sunlight onto the green and still be able to maintain a healthy green in a very tough environmental condition. So this is one of our tree management strategies that we've been working on to provide you healthy playing conditions and good putting surface. Now that we know how many trees we have on the property and to prune them and manage them, what about planting recommendations? One of our members, Wes Cheston, has an extensive background in tree management in British Columbia, and he developed a tree management plan that helped us identify indigenous species that will grow well here at Uplands Golf Club. Our goal was not for the next 10 years or 50 years, but what is this property gonna look like in the next 100 years? So firstly, we're gonna be removing any hazardous trees, trees that are unsafe. Second, we would like to remove any exotic species like the ponderosa pine that you've seen those failing throughout. And then also finally, we'd like to remove any trees or limbs that are causing any growing challenges or impeding the game of golf for you, the golfer here at Uplands. Enjoy your round, everybody.